Are you sure you'll be able to reach the docks alone? Young man, I am perfectly capable of defending myself. under the blood on the back of the case. Jack Gillingham. Maybe I should return this watch to his family. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Why must it always be a good evening? I was just being polite. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. Don't like questions. Or doctors. And the name is Seymour Fishburne, if you must know. What can you tell me about this part of town? A shithole filled with maggots. Liars and thieves, all of them. Are you thinking about someone in particular? Nope. Hate them all. Especially these petty, whining little shitbag beggars. Is there no one who deserves your leniency then? Well, Tom from our local is somewhat of a decent bloke. At least, unlike most maggots, he knows how to listen without opening his trap. What's your occupation? I take care of my mum. It's what I do. She's the only good thing in my life. Even though I don't treat her so good. You seem upset. Is something bothering you? I lost the necklace I bought her. I'm a fucking idiot. A worthless idiot. Sometimes it's hard to be a good son. I just want her to smile. No, I was thankful for her patience, appreciated like. God knows she deserves it. Any chance you can help me find Sean Hampton? The sad saint. Why would you talk to that cunt? Actually, that's confidential. Really? Well, go ask someone else then. I'm sure Tom Watts will gladly answer you. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. To every night, a dark night. Good evening, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Do you require medical assistance? <laughs> that's something I didn't expect to hear again. A doctor concerned with the health of his patients. Yeah. I could use some help. On several matters, in fact. I don't know which kind of doctor you're used to dealing with. But it's a doctor's purpose to heal people. 
And is it your purpose as well, Mr. Reed? I would say it's a convenient way for gaining people's trust. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. This is a slaughterhouse. It's locked. From Seymour to my beloved mother, Stella. Fishburne, that sneaky bastard. Good evening, Mr. Fishburne. Yeah, yeah. I have retrieved the gift for your mother, sir. Great. Give it here then and take this for your trouble. I also found the corpses. The ones under which you left the necklace, Mr. Fishburne. Ah, so that's where I left it. I can be a bit stupid sometimes. Have you no remorse? You don't even deny your crimes. I have many weaknesses, Dr. Reed, but lying about who I am ain't one of them. You're not a mindless animal, Seymour. Surely you have something to say about these murders. Speak up and I will listen without judgment. Could be right, Dr. Reed. Maybe it'll do some good to confide in a gentleman like you. You being educated and all. Tell me about your victims, Seymour. Who were they? Why them? Was there a link? Why should there be? They just kept getting on my nerves at the worst times, that's all. How many? How many victims? It's not like I keep records. It happens when it happens. You feel nothing, do you? No empathy for your victims at all? You seem pretty calm yourself, don't you? We're not talking about me. That right? Well, our calm's the only thing we have in common then. Did you take pleasure in killing them, Seymour? All those people, all those lives extinguished. I take no pleasure from it. Just gives me peace. Stills the anger. For a time. This rage you feel. Have you ever been able to control it? Resist it? I... I tried. For my mum. I tried for her. Telling the truth made me feel better for a while. Don't you think you should seek help? Talk to someone you trust, someone who cares about you. No. And don't dare speak about me to your colleagues either. Keep your mouth shut tight, especially about my mum. Why is your mother protecting you, Seymour? I'm her son. She's the only one who knows me. Sometimes I think she knows me better than I know myself. I understand you love her, but can't you see the awful situation you've put her in? Do you think my mum would have a better life if I were dead? She seems so sad to know me sometimes. I understand your mother's situation. Obtaining justice at the price of betraying her own flesh quite a dilemma. It might be my mum's wish that I end up swinging from a hangman's noose, but she wouldn't want to be the one who ties a knot round my neck. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Hello, boy. Um, hello. Good evening. Did I scare you? You have nothing to fear from me. No, it's just that people prefer to avoid me. Well, I won't. I'm a doctor. My name is Rufus, sir. Rufus Kingsbury. Do you know a man who lives in this part of town? A man named Sean Hampton. I'm looking for him. Sorry, sir. I don't know a lot of folks around here. Most prefer to avoid me. Well, I don't think you should talk to him. He may be very sick. Thanks for the tip. You might want to check the turquoise turtle. It's a pub not far from here. 
The barkeep knows everyone in these parts. What can you tell me about this region? It's all about staying out of trouble. But since most people prefer to avoid me, it's pretty easy. Why do people avoid you? They call me Rufus the Curse. Around here, I'm a bit of a bad luck charm. Have you ever thought about leaving? <laughs> Where else would I go? At least I know these streets and some people around here. This is my city, for better or worse. What do you do around here, Rufus? I listen to the news on the docks, sir. And I smile at those kind enough to spare me a bob. Do you have a job? It's hard to work, what with my head and all. Since I was a boy, I've always had trouble remembering what I do and why I do it. What do people say about this place? Things have been tense between the wet boot boys and the communists. They both feel they should run the dogs. Are you alone? Where is your family? I... I don't have any. My parents are dead. So you have no home? You're sleeping rough. No. I mean, yes. I live on the streets. I have no home. You should be careful, Rufus. There are things that lurk in the shadows of this city. Things that prey on the lonely and the desperate. Well, I've known worse. I'm not all alone. I have Mrs. Fishburne. She's been very kind to me. Why do you think she's so considerate? I can't say, sir. I guess she's a good soul. Sometimes it's like she replaces the mother I lost, even if we're not related. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Some call this. I'm feeling worse in my bones. The hatred. A wave of bitterness drowned in the jazz city. Good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Reed. Could I come in? Why? What do you want? I work at the Pembroke Hospital. I'm investigating the flu epidemic in this area. Oh, the Spanish flu. Well, that's quite liberal of you, Doctor. But this is no time to be knocking at people's doors. The disease takes away the good people too, madam. Why not let me in? It's Mrs. Fishburne. Stella Fishburne. And yes, indeed. Why not let a doctor in? Just grow eyes in the back of that head, sir. Gentlemen are easy targets in these parts. So you have questions about the flu, then? Yes, among other things. Forgive my rudeness at the door. It's just my son doesn't like strangers coming in the house. How is life around here? Life has always been hard in the East End. But it's everywhere nowadays, isn't it? Do you think the increase in violence has anything to do with the epidemic? Don't know. But it's most likely linked to the gangs, if you ask me. Recently, it's like everyone has had to pick a side. Violence has always fed on poverty, don't you think? It's a cruel law of the human condition. And selfishness is their rotten fruit. These days, you can just die in the gutter and no one will bat an eye. May I ask what you do for a living, Mrs. Fishburne? Since my husband died, I worked at the Dawson Rope Factory, but it closed before the war. I occasionally help at the night asylum, in exchange for food. Did your husband die in the war? Oh no. My Jack was a docker. He died when my Seymour was just a lad. The poor boy saw his dad slip and fall from that scaffolding. How do you pay the rent then? My Seymour works at the docks, just like his dad. He's very attached to the house he grew up in. It's not always easy, but we get by all right. The orphan that regards you as a mother, please tell me about him, Stella. 
You mean Rufus? I wish I could do even more for the poor boy. Most people are so selfish. But you're not. Years may have passed, but I haven't forgotten how it feels to go through days with nothing but an empty stomach. I'm trying to locate Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where he could be? You talking about the one everyone calls the sad saint? The man who takes care of the homeless? The very same, Miss Fishman. I'm sorry. I don't know where his shelter is. But if you ask around, I'm sure you'll get your answer. Your son's gone way beyond simply bullying people. He has a taste for blood, and you know it, don't you, Stella? One night, he told me straight up, in his own words. It was several days after one of his... episodes. Why did he confess? Did you suspect something? No. I guess he wanted his old mum to help him fight his... Uh, demons. Did Seymour tell you everything that night? More than I could stand. The words he used to describe his... hate, his rage, how he feels when he's done it. Stella, I know you are ashamed of your son's crimes. So why do you protect Seymour? I can't report my own son, can I? Not a burden I could bear. Burden? How do you mean? They'd hang him for sure. I won't send my only son to his death. I'm convinced you raised Seymour the best you could. You're not responsible for what he became. If someone ever found the courage to speak to the police, I will take my share. Tell me about these demons Seymour needs your help to fight. Seymour used to be such a happy child. And he is still a helping son most of the time. But when he gets angry, he can hardly contain his rage. All men and women are born innocent, Mrs. Fishburne. But there can be a monster within any of us. Do you think he can be cured, Doctor? Do you think something can extinguish this rage inside my Seymour? There is no cure for murder, Mrs. Fishburne. Only justice. There ain't no hope, then. Somehow, somewhere, my son has turned into a monster, and nothing will bring him back. Goodbye, Miss Fishburne. Take care of yourself. Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. Do you need help? A real doctor caring about me. That's a first. I feel like a real person. A real doctor treats everyone the same, Rufus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. All these whispers and monsters got folk gossiping and scared. Mark my words, miss. These murders are the work of a vampire. A vampire? Whatever do you mean? I'm a tracker of these creatures. A vampire hunter. You best be off to your hunting then. For if the sewer dog is back and hunting all these poor folk, he needs a catching. A sewer dog? 
What's it look like? It's an old story. A monster with daggers for teeth and icy claws. He comes of a sudden, nighttime, claiming innocence, then vanishes. Teeth? Claws? Murders by night? Your sewer dog is my business. He's the kind of prey I hunt, milady. Not a drop of blood left in his body. This is the work of a vampire. Evening, miss. Well, I never. That's a first. Customers who make that much mess rarely come back. Never mind in fancy togs. I'm much more myself than when we first met. By the way, I'm Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome back to the Turquoise Turtle, then, Doctor. I'm Sabrina Cavendish. How can I help you? Miss Cavendish, would you be willing to help me locate Sean Hampton? You better ask Tom, sir. Why not answer me directly? We respect the privacy of our customers here, sir. Only Tom can decide who to speak to and what he'll say to them. Excuse my curiosity, but where exactly are you from, Miss Cavendish? Something bothering you? What, my name? Or my complexion? Believe me, I never judge someone on their place of birth or the color of their skin. If that's true, you'd be one of the few not to make fun of me. Just you, Tom, Dyson, Miss Fishburne, and of course Mr. Hampton. I'm sorry if I worried you. I was just curious to find out if you know this part of town well. Nosy. My dad was a sailor from Bombay, and my mum was a maid born up in Glasgow. They got married in London. And here I am. What can you tell me about this area? People don't appreciate that line of questioning round here. You best be more careful with what you say, sir. You look concerned, Miss Cavendish. This is a bad borough. Most people I know are afraid. Most locals will rob you blind, or worse. You best mind your step. So you and your friends all feel in danger? No exceptions? Tom's the only exception I've come across until now. But he's... He's not like everybody else. This place seems... How shall I put it? Very colorful. I'm sure it has plenty of stories to tell. We get people of all sorts here. It's that rare place in the docks where you can have a drink without being murdered. At least it's not happened yet. So this bar is neutral territory, then? Yeah. Tom's convinced this is something the locals need. No one ever draws a weapon here. That's one of the reasons I accepted the job. Your boss must be quite the negotiator to force such an agreement. Yeah. Tom's a great bloke. Mr. Hampton, who runs the night asylum, he's the only other man that's able to keep peace around here. Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Good evening, sir. Have you witnessed any suspicious activity or strange events recently? And what do you define as a strange event? More to the point, who are you? My name is Ichabod Throgmorton, vampire hunter extraordinaire and warden of the East End. A vampire hunter? Really? I know what you're thinking. I'm just another lunatic howling at the moon, but I'm not. The bloodsuckers exist, and they're close. Mr. Throgmorton, I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'd like to hear more about these vampires you're hunting. A man of science? Well, I'll be glad to enlighten you. What can you tell me about this neighborhood? Did you hear about what happened to Jack Gillingham? Poor boy. It's a shame I wasn't around to protect him. It's impossible to protect everyone. The violence seems endemic in this part of town. But it's my duty. I am convinced Jack Gillingham was killed by a vampire. These evil rodents are spreading like a plague. So, how exactly are you protecting these people? I'm curious. I patrol late at night, investigating anything unusual. I try and encourage people to stay indoors, but people are careless. 
Can I help in any way? Actually, yes. I plan to put up posters to alert the population to the vampire threat. Are you asking me to paste posters about vampires around the docks? If you wouldn't mind. If you did that, then I can focus on my patrols. How do you identify a vampire? It's simple, really. They can't stand daylight. They're afraid of garlic and holy symbols. They also cannot enter a house without being invited. Have you ever killed one of these creatures? Yourself, I mean. Of, of course I have. What kind of question is that? It's a dirty business, believe me. Have you heard of the Guard of Prewan? Of course. They're dedicated hunters. A little militant for my taste, but they do let anyone join. <laughs> Were you ever tempted to join the Guard yourself? I did think about it, but I'm more of a silent hunter. They're more of a sanitary militia. So you hunt alone? That sounds risky. Vampires are just like every other predator. They hunt when they're hungry and follow certain patterns. It's just a matter of observation and patience. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me, Mr. Throgmorton? The sad saint? He should be at his night asylum at this hour. But I cannot tell you how to find it, sorry. Really? Why is that? It's nothing personal, Doctor. I'm sure your intentions are good, but people who sleep there... They have plenty of reasons to hide. I could make you tell me, but I respect your refusal. You really believe Sean is a saint, don't you? All I will say is this. Gossip has it that when he was a child, he was molested by a priest of all people. Funny thing is, though, it only strengthened his faith. Maybe at least you can tell me who could help me find him. Tell you what, go and chat with Tom Watts. He's a bartender and good judge of character. If he talks to you, then it's fine by me. Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. Good evening, sir. Whatever. Don't you recognize me? We met a few nights ago. Don't take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm Dyson Delaney. I'll try to remember you. It's time. What do you do for a living, Mr. Delaney? I drink. I drink in the morning and at noon. I drink at night. And then I drink some more. Why do you drink so much? Maybe it's because I prefer dying slowly. Death can be so abrupt. Personally, I like to see mine coming at my own pace. You sound very sad, sir. That's because I am, Doc. Don't you work at all? I'd love to, but I don't have the time. Didn't I tell you? Drink in the morning and at noon. I'll drink at night. Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly. So joyful. No reason at all to rejoice, then? Life is hopeless and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you a story. All right. Go on. A few years ago, when I believed a resolute man could change things around here for good, a tragedy occurred nearby. What kind of tragedy? It was a bomb. A bomb that exploded and killed many people. Metal and blood everywhere. Shouts. Fire. Broken window of the shoe shop. The torn street light. You lost people you loved that day, didn't you? I've lost everything. But you know what the worst part is? I don't even remember where it happened. I've drunk so much to forget it. Now I can't remember where it was. I can't pay my homage to the dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaney. It's okay. If you ever find the place, just 
Leave a flower for me there. Even if you tell me where it is, I'm not sure I'd memorize it. Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap... How dare... Why are you so cynical? Cynicism is the polite way to express despair, Doctor. Surely you must have had dreams and expectations when you were young, like everybody else. Sure. I wanted things to change. To really change, and to change for good. The bigger the dream, the harder the fall. Sounds like you were an idealist, which is honorable. No, sir. I was an anarchist, and I believe that exclusive property is a robbery in nature. I wanted a new world to rise from the ashes, Dr. Reed. Do you really think the world is that bad? No, I believe we all can choose to make it better. But most of us are too weak, too corrupt and too guilty. I failed for sure, but others will come. I want to know more about your past as an anarchist, Dyson. I'm still an anarchist, Doctor. Make no mistake. I just reject violence as a tool to change the world, unlike my comrades. Do you still see your comrades, then? Even if you don't agree with their methods anymore, I mean. No. I hope they'll come to share my point of view one day. I'll raise my glass to that splendid idea. Do you believe in a bloodless revolution, then? I do not believe in much anymore, Doctor. But I'll admit, I like your idea of peaceful change. I like it a lot. I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? I really don't know. I heard he'd been abducted. I don't know if he's back. Who could tell me then? About the sad saint. I'll try asking Tom Watts about him. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. Are they stupid or something? I've never even been to India. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me, then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. What can you tell me about this part of town? Well, it's not that bad. Thanks to people like the sad saint of the East End. Who? Sean Hampton, our own private holy figure. Few are foolish enough to make peace with the gangs. Sean is one of them. How is it you can keep this place open? This part of town doesn't seem particularly safe. Well, since everybody needs a drink, my pub is considered neutral ground by most groups. I see. So you get pressure from all sides about how this place should be run, do you? Well, something like that. Nothing that a few wise words and a bottle of gin can't solve. You're something of a figurehead around here. I'm only pouring alcohol for everyone to forget their troubles. Sean Hampton is the one giving them long-term hope. Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. And with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps, with you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, you know. Very well. Show me where it is, and I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. Why does your waitress feel in danger working on the docks? This part of town is dangerous for all, but for women it's worse, as always. Sabrina is a brave girl, but she can't help feeling in danger. Do you think she has good reason to feel this way? Are you not worried about her safety? Of course I am. The truth is, she's tougher than me deep inside. She just has to learn to control it. Tom, I need to find Sean Hampton as quickly as possible. I've been told you could help me. I heard the sad saint was recovering at Pembroke Hospital. Did he leave or something? I believe he returned to his flock. Can you confirm that? Oh, I bet you're right. Sean can't help but worry about the poor and sick. 
Oh, I guess it has something to do with what happened to him as a baby. Please, tell me. Well, I don't like to gossip, but I heard that the sad saint was abandoned as a baby in front of a Catholic orphanage in Dublin. That would explain his faith and need to help everyone. The important thing is I find him. Quickly. Uh, why not try his night asylum? He takes care of those who need a meal or a roof there. Where is it? It's in an old warehouse, northwest of here. Just follow the bank to the west and go north when you reach the end of the pier. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. I have this thirst of blood. I can't believe I'm doing this. I have this thirst of blood. Seems like the guard of Prewen is on Sean Hamilton's trail too. 